Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare 12 for here bringing you another Minecraft Cold War aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and building the Boeing Vetrol CH-46 C9. The Boeing Vetrol CH-46 C9 is a medium lift tandem rotor transport helicopter powered by twin turboshaft engines. It was designed by Vetrol and manufactured by Boeing Vetrol following Vetrol's acquisition by Boeing. Development of the C9 was originally designated by the firm as the Vetrol Model 107 commenced during 1956. It was envisioned as a successor to the first generation of rotor aircraft such as the H-21 Flying Banana. It had been powered by piston engines. In its place, the V-107 made use of the emergent turboshaft engine. On April 22, 1958, the V-107 prototype performed its maiden flight. During June 1958, the U.S. Army awarded a contract for construction of 10 production standard aircraft designated as the YHC-1A, based on the V-107. This initial order was later cut down to only three. During 1961, the U.S. Marine Corps, which had been studying its requirements for a medium-lift twin turbine cargo slash troop assault helicopter, selected Boeing Vetrol's Model 107M as the basis for which to manufacture a suitable rotor aircraft to meet their needs, known uh, unofficially as the Frog and formally as the C-9. It was operated across all U.S. Marine Corps operational environments between its introduction during the Vietnam War and in frontline retirement during 2014. The C-9 was operated by the USMC to provide all-weather day or night assault transport of combat troops, supplies, and equipment until it was replaced by the MV-22 Osprey during the 2010s. The USMC also used the helicopter for combat support, search and rescue, casualty evacuation, and tactical recovery of aircraft and personnel. The C-9 also functioned as U.S. Navy's standard medium lift utility helicopter prior to being phased out of service in favor of the MH-60s uh, Nighthawk during the early 2000s. Several overseas operators acquired the rotorcraft as well. Canada operates the C-9 designated as the CH-113. The type was used uh, predominantly in the search and rescue role in 2004. Other uh, export customers for the type include Japan, Sweden, and Saudi Arabia. The commercial version of the rotorcraft is called the BV-107-2, commonly referred to simply as the Vetrol. So yeah, this CH-46 scene I hear, a very cool helicopter, um, kind of the little brother to the much bigger and kind of more well-known CH-47 Chinook. Um, it basically functions kind of the same way and overall kind of the same helicopter, except it's just a lot smaller in size in comparison. Uh, but overall, really cool looking helicopter and should be a fun build to add in to your worlds if you're looking either for a nice kind of naval aircraft or um, a marine helicopter. This, this is definitely going to fit into those scenarios. This uh, aircraft was originally designed in the Cold War, but it did sea service all the way up into about 2015, in which they were um, completely phased out and retired from the U.S. Marine Corps. So uh, it definitely kind of saw a little bit of modern uh, combat service, but for the most part, yeah, um, was uh, kind of mainly a Cold War type helicopter. Before we go and jump into this build, though, I do want to go and give a special thanks to Patreon support Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more than you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description where you can go and put a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a viewer quick request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It is really greatly appreciated. So again, definitely feel free to check that out and link will be down in the description for that. With that though, let's go and dive in here to take another nice kind of in-depth look at the CH-46 C9. So, going ahead and jumping into it, we have the front um, cockpit here of the aircraft. Nothing too fancy, just uh, pretty simplistic in design. You have basically the little kick-out panels there for the pilots, as well as the main kind of canopy that goes across here in the main cockpit um, windows there. On the sides, we do have some guns mounted in these little openings. We have a gun on um, both sides there, and I uh, felt that they would look the best with those guns. So those are included. Those can be used as kind of small access doors, and um, if this is kind of being used in a search and rescue type of configuration, um, it would have this um, crane or this winch that would be able to extend out and could either be opened from this door here or that door. You can obviously access the winch from those two spots. Um, then we have uh, the front rotor. Nothing too fancy with that. Pretty straightforward, just a tri-bladed rotor. Continuing back, we have the detail on the side here, the various windows in the crew compartment. We then have the 
uh, wheel pods here for the rear. Um, I believe the landing gear is fixed, so it does not retract. Um, so the landing gear here in the front is um, displayed like that, and the landing gear on the back here is extended like so. And I do not, uh, again, believe that they fold in. So it's kind of cool. We've got these pods here on the side. Um, again, the wheels there, landing gear. We have marines, so this is done up in a marine color scheme. Um, so it has the kind of subdued, uh, kind of gray marines on the side and the uh, numbering of the aircraft up there in the front. And also the tail here has the base identifier and all that. So pretty cool stuff. We have the turbo shaft engines here located above the rear. And then you have the kind of main tail section here, which houses the um, second dairy rotor. So overall, pretty cool design for it. Uh, it came out really nice and should be a really cool build, as I mentioned, to add into any of your maps if you're looking for kind of a cool naval uh, medium type helicopter. But without further ado, that's it for this overview. Let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. All right, guys, so moving into our first layer here, we're going to be going ahead and beginning with our... Um, first layer which will be layer number three now we're starting with layer three because it gives us a better basis of the aircraft and will be easier for us to kind of go ahead and build off of a few quick things i want to mention before we go ahead and jump into this tutorial though first being that if you are completely new to my aircraft tutorials the way i like to structure these tutorials i like to do half on camera half off what this means is we're we'll building the entire center line on camera and then we'll be building the right side so it'll be up to you guys to take the right side and transfer it over to the left side in addition, uh, we will be building only the in-flight model. The landed version would sit at a slight angle, so we would not be able to really show that angle with the model we have in front of us, and it would require kind of a different uh, redesign of it to actually have it slanted. So this will be, again, only for the in-flight model um, of the aircraft. Um, and final last thing I wanna mention is, um, my may sound a little echoey. I'm gonna have to kind of see how this uh, sounds at post recording. Uh, but this is my first video recording in my um, new uh, place, so it is a little bit echoey as I am kind of in a uh, room with hardwood floors and basically a blank four walls, so it's very, uh, e the echo is very apparent. Um, but hopefully it doesn't pick up too much in the recording, so if, again, if it is echoey, I do apologize, and hopefully I'll have that ironed out within the next few videos. With that, though, let's go ahead and dive in here to um, doing the um, C9. So to start off with our first layer here, we'll be going ahead and begin with a row of three of stone top slabs. Now these are going to be stone top slabs, so you're going to look like this. They're not going to be half slabs like that. So again, you want a top slab row of three. The direction you want the front of the aircraft facing, which will have it face that way, we're going to place down an iron trap door. And then the air direction here, which will be going toward the rear, we're going to place down a stone brick wall. After that stone brick wall, we're going to place down a row of stone top slabs down the length here of the ship, or the length of the aircraft, for a length of 17 top slabs. Going out to the sides now, we're going to go back up to the front. We're going to place down a dark cuckoo trap door coming off this iron trap door, a nether brick top slab back, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 stone top slabs back. We're going to go ahead and place down one top slab coming off this last one here. If you're on Java, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some pistons and we're going to place down a upside down piston like so, and we want to go ahead and then place down four more going forward. Now, on Java, we will be using a tool called the Debug Stake, which will allow us actually to modify these pistons and kind of create a cool design with them. If you do not have access to the Debug Stick, so if you are on um, Bedrock or Pocket Edition, instead of using the Debug Stick, I would recommend to go ahead and, or instead of using pistons, to use stone full blocks. So again, instead of the pistons, you can use a stone full block as an alternative. With that done, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone top slab. Like this going forward, we're going to go and skip two spaces. In our third space here, we're going to place down a stone top slab again, followed by one, two, three, four, going forward. Going back to this section here, we're going to place down one and two more stone top slabs to the side. We're going to go ahead and then place down two iron trap doors coming off those two stone top slabs like that. After that is all done there, we're going to go ahead and then take our pistons again, and we're going to place down two upside down pistons. Again, instead of those pistons, you can use stone full blocks. We then want to go ahead and take our stone full blocks this time. And we're going to place down a row of one, two, three, going back from that first piston. And on the outside here, we're going to place down one stone block. And then we're going to go and place down a light gray shulker box on its side like so. And then there's stone block. And then we're going to take our stone top slabs and we're going to place down two top slabs like that. So that right there is going to pretty much form up what we have here. 
um, on the sides. And basically to take a look at it from above, this is what it should look like from the top down view with this layer complete. All you need to do at this point is to go ahead and take the right side and copy over to the left side. And once you have that done, again, that is going to conclude everything there is there for layer number three. With that though, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layers one and two. Moving into layers one and two for these layers to begin with, we're gonna go ahead and go to the bottom of the stone brick wall. We're gonna place down an end rod that comes down from it and then a birchwood fence gate underneath it. We then wanna go ahead and place down a block of coal to both sides of that fence gate, as well as an item frame on both sides. And in that item frame, we're gonna place down a gray stained glass pane. If you're on Java, we can go ahead and also take a polished black stone button and we can place it down on the side here of that block as well. Just note that it's only a Java feature to place down an item frame and a button in the same block space. So if you are on a different version, you will have to go ahead and just place down the item frame or just place down the button. Again, kind of leave that up to you guys to choose. Um, with that all the way though, that's it for our front landing gear. And then going to the rear, we're going to go ahead and place down a birchwood fence gate coming down from this, um, this, uh, uh, shoulder box and then we're going to then place down a lever here on the stone block facing toward the fence gate and then we're going to place down a block of coal to both sides of the fence gate a item frame come off the side of the block a gray stained glass pane in the item frame polished black stone button on the side there and we're just going to do the same thing over here as well so just like that and the landing gear on the right side will also or sorry the left side here will also be done so you again you'll just do the same technique on the sides here, like that, and same thing over here. Boom, so just like that, and you have your landing gear done. Also, again, don't forget this lever here, that's kind of hidden on the back. But that right there is it for the rear landing gear, and with that, we have our front landing gear done, and that's gonna complete layers one and two, and with that, we'll go ahead and jump up to layer number four. Moving into our next layer here, we have layer number four. For layer four to begin with, we're gonna go ahead and place down a black uh, stained glass block on top of this iron trap door here in the front. We're going to go then place down a stone up down stair going forward from it and then a skeleton skull on the front of the stair. We're going to go then go back from this black stained glass block with another black stained glass block so you have two in total. A black concrete block and then we're going to go and then take our stone and we're going to place down a long row of stone going down the center of the aircraft for a total of 20 so it should overhang the back here by one block. After that we're going to go and then place down a upside down piston Right here, an alternative to the piston would be to place down an upside down stone stair. So it would be like this, instead of the piston, and then a stone top slab. And that right there is gonna make up your center line. Moving out to the sides here, we're gonna go up to the front, we're gonna place down another brick corner stair, upside down, come off this stone stair, and then two black <coughs> stingless blocks back, and then a black concrete block. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, stone blocks back. Then another upside down piston or an upside down stair, whichever one um, works for your version. And then a stone top slab, like so on the end there. After that, we're gonna go and place down a skeleton skull, come off this piston here. We're gonna go then go forward from the skeleton skull with one, two, three, four, five andesite walls. Then one, two, three stone blocks, followed by an andesite wall again. Then one, two, three, four, five stone blocks. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven andesite walls. And then lastly, we're gonna take some black stained glass panes and place down two black stained glass panes like that to finish that row. We're gonna go and then place down a skeleton skull coming off the side of this um, stone block to both sides, as well as a birchwood sign going back from the skeleton skull on the side of that wall right there. We then wanna go ahead and grab ourselves some item frames. And we're also gonna go ahead and need a dark gray banner. And we're also going to need this uh, firework star. And what we're going to do here is on these last three andesite walls here from the front, we're going to go and place down um, the three item frames. We're going to place down a fire firework star in the center, a gray banner in the sides, and then we're going to go ahead and rotate the gray banners so that they point toward that firework star. And what this is going to basically create is a little U.S. national star insignia that's on all United States aircraft. So kind of a does uh, kind of a um, I guess. Uh, distinction or a defining um, symbol to, I guess, tell it's allied, uh, very symbol, similar to the Randalls that um, other Air Forces use, especially European ones. Um, after that's done, though, we're going to go then take iron trap doors, and we're going to go ahead and place down a row of five across those stone blocks. Now, at this point, we will be going ahead and grabbing a debug stick. By, to grab a debug stick, we'll be using the command slash give space at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. By pressing enter, again, here's the command right here. 
uh, and pressing enter will get this glowing stick. Now what we can do here these iron trap doors is we can actually left click them until we get selected open false and we can then right click them and actually lay them flat on the side there of the blocks. So it kind of helps beef up this area a little bit more. Um, if you do not have access to the debug stick, you can go ahead and very simply instead of using iron trap doors, use birchwood trap doors or just don't put them. Um, either one will work. They're not a huge detail factor, um, but just something to help a little bit more with the shaping here. Anyway, so after that is all complete, uh, moving into our little pods here, we're going to place down two stone blocks here, followed by another two, then another row of two, and then one last row of two. So you have basically two rows of four like that going back. We're going to go then take our uh, polished deep slate. We're going to place down a polished deep slate block right here. And then we want to go then place down a stone stair here to the side. After that is complete, we're going to go then take our pistons. We're going to place down two pistons like so. And we're going to place down another polished deep slate slab here. And we're going to go then place down a stone slab to the side of it. So it's going to look like this here on the back. And after that is all done, that is basically all we have here for this uh, layer. And just make sure I'm not forgetting anything and everything does appear to be good to go. Um, so that's again right here is what it should look like from the top down view. At this point in time also, we can go ahead and take our debug stick and for Java players, we're gonna go ahead and go to these two pistons here and we can go ahead and right click them. Again, I didn't actually mention this, but an alternative to the pistons here would be to place down a stone corner stair. So come off this stair here and then a polished deep slate um, stair right here. So again, that would be an alternative if you do not have access to the pistons. Anyways though, with that out of the way, uh, we can take our debug stick and we can actually right click these pistons. So you say extend it to true and it kind of gets rid of that wood portion. And we'll do the same thing here for the bottom ones here. Again, if applicable for Java players. So just like that. And I don't think there's any on the front here and there is not and yeah, that's all we need to do. And that's pretty much it for that. Just make sure that with these pistons, you are careful if you do place a block around them, they will revert back to their normal state. So just make sure that you are careful and uh, you don't mess with them because they will revert back and you have to fix them again. Anyways though, that is going to conclude everything we have there for layer four. Let's move on to layer number five. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five to go ahead and begin with, we're gonna place down a piston up here on the front, stone block like so, or, or stone upside down stair. We're gonna go then place down a stone block behind that piston, followed by a uh, black stained glass block and then a second and then a third so you have a total of three black stained glass blocks and then we're just going to place down a black concrete block behind it to close off the canopy that's going to be our front stair line moving to the rear we're going to go up from the stone top slab at an angle we're going to place down a stone full block and a stone top slab coming off like that to go ahead and form the rear with that done going back up to the front we're going to place down a stone slab next to this piston here and we're going to then place down a stone full block followed by a stone upside down stair after that, we're going to go and then place down one and two black stained glass blocks and then a black concrete block here. Going back from the black concrete, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and twenty one stone full blocks back and then a stone top slab on the very end. After that's all done, going back up to the front here, we're going to place down a uh, skeleton skull coming off the side of this block here, a light gray stained glass pane and then a narrow brick wall, like so. We then want to place down a stone stair, like that. And we're gonna go then place down one, two, or sorry, one and two of these andesite walls. Now, at this point in time, we're gonna go and then take an item frame, place it on the side of this andesite wall, and we then want to place down a light gray bed, or rather, sorry, just a normal gray bed in the item frame. And then if you're on Java, we'll place a birchwood sign on the side there of that block as well. Um, again, for Java players, only those are, that's the only version that can place down item frames and signs in the same block space. So if you are on a different version, just keep that in mind and you will have to go ahead and use um, just an item frame and disregard the sign. Now at this point in time, um, basically we do have a difference in the two sides. So I would recommend going ahead and building the whole front so that it is symmetrical on both sides uh, from this top down view. And then once you have both sides completed, uh, we'll be going ahead and then moving into um, our differences. So go ahead and take time now, pause the video if you need to, copy the right side over to the left side for the front here, and then we'll go ahead and continue on. Alright guys, so when it comes to um, this section here, we're going to start off with the right side here. On the right side, we're going to place down two stone brick walls. We're going to go ahead and then place down a andesite wall, and then we're going to go ahead and then place down a light gray stained glass pane, followed by another andesite wall. On the left side, it's going to be a little bit different. Instead of, this, instead of placing down stone brick walls, we're going to place down a light gray stained glass pane, then 
a total of four anti-site walls going back and that will bring us equal with this anti-site wall on both sides. So go ahead and just make sure you take some time, make sure you um, transfer both sides over equally. Again, that right side there is going to be a little bit different compared to that of the left side. With that all done though, we're going to go ahead and go back to doing each side or individually and basically or going back to doing both sides being the same um, as the end of our little asymmetrical bit. Anyways though, going back from the standard side wall, same will apply for both sides. We're going to go back an additional 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 walls. So all the way back to this stone block here. Then going to the little wheel pods here, we're going to place down two iron trap doors. We then want to place down a, a polished deep slate slab here. And then a stone slab to the side, just like that. We're going to go then place down a row of two of daylight detectors. We're going to turn those to the night mode like so. And we then want to place down an iron trap door on the outside here. And then we're going to go then place down a dark Uga trap door like this on the inside. So it's going to look like that there for that. We're going to go then take stone brick walls and we're just going to place down two stone brick walls right here. And these pistons will revert so you will need to go ahead and just reset them. And that can be very simply done by just going ahead and right clicking them there with your debug stick. And that right there is basically how that should look there for that wheel pod. And basically the last thing for us to do here is to go ahead and go to the front. And we're going to go ahead and right click that front piston there with a debug stick and, um, like that. Again, an alternative there for that piston would be a stone stair. That would be kind of like this here on the front. Anyways, though, that is going to do it for this layer. Make sure you do pay close attention to those two asymmetrical bits. And looking at it from the top down view, this is what you should have with that layer complete. Anyways, though, that's it for layer number um, five and with that let's move on to layer number six. Moving into our next layer we have layer number six. For layer six to go ahead and get started with here we're going to place down a light gray or sorry black stingless full block on top of this one here like so and then we're going to place down two more backs. So you have a total of three there. We then want to go ahead and place down a uh, black concrete block just like that and that's going to make our front center line. Moving to the rear of the aircraft we're going to go ahead and just go up at an angle from the stone top slab and we're just going to place down a stone up sound stair. With that done, going back up to the front here, we're going to go ahead and place down a, another brick wall coming off the side of this glass block there. Two more glass blocks back, and then a black concrete block like so. After we have that all done, we're going to go then go to the side here of this, um, this uh, narrow brick wall. We're going to place down a black stained glass pane, as well as an end rod that's going to be on top of this block right here. If you're on Java, we can actually change the direction here of this glass pane using our debug stick here. And very simply, all we need to do is we need we want to extend the glass pane to actually connect up to that end rod. So in that direction we want to connect it to, we can press the F3 key. We can look at our second paragraph there, that fourth line, it says we're facing north. So what we're going to do here is we're going to left click that glass pane and we're going to get it to we get selected north and it should say false. By right clicking it, it will set it to true and it should look like it connects up to that end rod. So that right there is all you're going to do for that and it helps kind of create a nicer shape there for the front canopy. Um, again, not a, a totally important thing to have, but just a nice little thing to add on. After that though, we're going to go ahead and take our inside walls we're going to place it on our row three back on the side here. And this at this point here is where things start to get different. So um, again, I would recommend going ahead and building both sides of the front here and getting to this point. And then we're going to go ahead and then cover the asymmetrical parts, uh, which we start to get into here pretty soon. So um, with that, go ahead and copy both sides over and we'll go ahead and continue on. Alrighty guys, so going ahead and continuing on here with the build. So what we have going on here is uh, we have those inside walls that are set up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with our right side here. We're going to place down two more stone brick walls. And behind these blocks, we can just place down three stone full blocks. Then we're going to go ahead and place down another inside wall. And then another stone, or rather, instead of the stone full block, we're going to place down a black concrete block, followed by one and two more. So you have a total of three. And then an inside wall right here. Now what's going to happen at this point is we're going to go ahead and then place down a polished black stone, upside down stair here like that for the, for the gun. And we're going to go ahead and then place down an end rod and a chain coming off like that for the side mounted machine gun. And that's going to form up the right side. The left side here, again, is going to be a little bit different. Now, we have our three inside walls here. We're going to go ahead and place down a black concrete block on the inside here of this last one. Then one and two more, so you have a total of three. The middle one, we're going to place down a polished um, black stone upside down stairs. Same thing we did on the air side there, an end rod and a chain. And then an inside wall right next to it. We're going to go then place down a stone full block after the black concrete and an inside wall. So you have these two walls. Then a narrow black concrete block here, a black stained glass block here, a stone block, 
anti wall here to the side. And that will basically create this section here, which looks just like this. So again, here is an overview of what this front section will look like. If you need to go ahead and pause it and make sure both sides are pretty much the same there. With um, that all done, uh, basically we'll go ahead and continue on. So both sides again will go back to being the same. So for both sides, we're gonna place down a stone block here and a side wall, then a black concrete, black stained glass, stone block, and a side wall, uh, black concrete, black stained glass, two stone blocks, two polished deep slate um, walls, another black concrete block here, and another black stained glass block like that. After that, we're gonna go then continue on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stone full blocks back. And we wanna go ahead and then take our inside walls. We'll go with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine walls along the side of those nine blocks. And we're just gonna place down a stone up downstairs here on the back, like so. Now, once you have that all done, that's gonna pretty much conclude this layer. We'll go ahead and take our debug stick here and we will go ahead and right click those pistons to go ahead and get rid of that wood portion there on the bottom that we did forget to do in the previous layer. And that will create those pistons there. And that right there is pretty much it. That is going to wrap up everything we have there for layer six. Again, here's an overview of what it looks like from the top down view. With that all done, let's go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number seven. Moving into our next layer, we go ahead and move into layer seven. For layer seven to go ahead and get started with, we're gonna place down a black stained glass pane that's gonna go on top of this black stained glass block here. We're gonna go ahead and place down two black stained glass full blocks back, a black concrete block on the end there. And then we're gonna take our stone blocks, we're gonna place down a long row down the center here. That's gonna be a total of 23 blocks long, it should end on top of that last stone stair there in the center. We're gonna go ahead and then place down the inside wall here on the back, an item frame, a gray concrete block in the item frame, and then a, a birchwood sign over the side of that um, wall there to go ahead and create the back. After that's done, we're gonna go ahead and then place down a light gray stainless pane here to the side of this wall here, and then we're gonna go forward 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 stone full blocks forward. At this point here, um, we're gonna go ahead and then focus our attention here back up to the front. We're gonna place down a black stained glass pane, come out this block here, one and two black stained glass blocks back, and then a black concrete block right here. After that, we're gonna go ahead and place down a black stained glass pane to the side of this block here, and then we're gonna place down a narrow brick wall uh, going back. And we then wanna go ahead and place down a polished deep slate wall here to the side. We then wanna go ahead and place down an item frame on the side of this wall. And in that item frame, we're gonna go ahead and place down a iron bar like that. Then we want to place down a andesite wall and then a, um, we're going to go and stop right there. So at this point, I'd recommend going ahead and taking both sides, making sure that they are replicated to both sides. So just like we've been doing for the past few layers. And once you have that done, go ahead and resume the video and we'll continue on. We do have our last differences here on the sides. We're going to go ahead and finish off. So hopefully by now you have both sides complete and we're going to now move into our differences. Now on the right side here, we're going to just place down a stone block here behind this. And we're going to go ahead and continue for stone brick walls with two more walls here and then two stone blocks. We're going to go ahead and switch back to our black concrete. We're going to place down one, two, three black concrete and it should connect up with this stone block right here. That was kind of for our back section there. And we then want to go ahead and place down a inside wall here, then a stone top slab right here and then an inside wall like that. Over on the other side, we're gonna go ahead and basically do the same thing, uh, rather a little bit different. We're gonna go ahead and place down from this black concrete block three. We're gonna place down an andesite wall here, stone top slab and another andesite wall. We then wanna place down one, two, three stone full blocks. And then we're gonna place down our three uh, andesite walls. And that should connect us up. And now both sides here will be basically the same. So starting on the right side here, we're gonna go ahead and go back from the sand to side wall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and side walls back. And then we're gonna place down one, two, three, like gray stained glass panes to go ahead and complete that siding. Now really the last thing here for this layer is going to pretty much involve the banners and the lettering on the side of the aircraft. Now in this tutorial, I will not be going ahead and going into how to make the lettering, but I will be going ahead and letting you know that there are plenty of tutorials out there that do cover how to do the lettering here for the aircraft. Unfortunately, it just would take a lot of time for the tutorial and is something that I'm gonna leave up to you guys, especially if you wanna make the Navy version, you can put Navy on the side of the aircraft instead um, and all that. So basically the way it's done, I mean, we have our light gray banners and our kind of gray dye to go ahead and make the lettering. So for our number for the aircraft, we have a two digit, digit number and that very simply goes on these two anti walls. So for me, I just did 23 
again, you can do whatever number you want. Doesn't really matter. Um, again, it's going to, you only have room there for a two digit number, so it will have to be a two digit number. After that though, we do have Marines. So for this, you will need the M banner. You need, will need a R, or sorry, rather an A, an R, an I, N, E, S. And for this, it's very simple. Um, on the left side here of the aircraft, it's gonna start right after this window right here. It's gonna be on this end of the side wall. You're gonna spell out the Marines, like that. And then on the other side here, the M is gonna start on this wall here, and it's gonna be basically, again, spelled the same way on the side there, so it looks like that. And with that all done, that is going to basically form up both sides, and that is going to complete what we have there for layer number seven for the build. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number eight. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number eight. For layer eight to go ahead and get started with here, we're gonna go ahead and place down a anticide wall up here on the top of this um, black stained glass block. We're gonna go then go back from it for row of stone. That's gonna be a total of six blocks. We then wanna go ahead and place down two pistons, um, like so. Again, if you don't have access to uh, pistons or do, using the debug stick, we can go ahead and use stone slabs as an alternative. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone block, then again a row of pistons. This time this is going to be a row of eight going back. Again, it could be used, you can use stone slabs as well. We're going to go ahead and then place down a row of stone blocks. This is going to go ahead and be a total of nine. It's going to end on top of this anti wall here on the back. Then coming off this um, stone block, we're just going to place down a skeleton skull on the end there, and that's going to make your center line there for the helicopter. Moving to our sides, we're going to place down a daylight detector here next to this wall, turn that to night mode, and then we're going to place down one uh, stone stair here, followed by two, three, and four. So four stairs in total, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen of the polished deep slate blocks back or slabs back, and then one, two, three, four, five, six stone blocks. A stone stair and then a skeleton skull on the side of that stone block there. Once you have that done we're going to then go off this stone block here we're going to place down a skeleton skull. We're going to go and then take our iron trap doors we're going to place down one two three and again we'll use our debug stick here to close them like that flat against the side of those stone blocks. Again you can use birchwood trap doors or just disregard in general. We're going to go ahead and then place down a polished black stone wall here. If you do have a debug stick on Java we can go ahead and use our debug stick here to actually extend it um, extend the walls so it actually forms up to the north and south for me at least and it'll kind of go in those directions there so it kind of fills the space and makes it look a little bit better um anyways though with that all done right there i think that's pretty much it here for this layer pretty simple and straightforward one uh, we will go ahead and take our debug stick and we will go ahead and right click our pistons here um, and we will go ahead and set them to this um, mode like that to have it sit nice and flat there and help form kind of our upper spine there of the helicopter Anyways, though, uh, that right there is going to complete layer 8, and with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into layer number 9. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number 9. For layer 9 to go ahead and get started with, we're going to go ahead and begin with a place down a light gray stain with paint on top of this anti-side wall here. And then we're going to go back 1, 2, 3, um, and yeah, 3 stone full blocks, then a stone stair, and then a stone slab coming off that stone stair. On the side of the 3 full blocks, we're going to place down a 3 light gray stain with paints, a skeleton skull here on the side of the stair. And then going to the back here, we're going to go ahead and very simply place down an inside wall on top of the stone block. If you are on Java, we will go ahead and take our debug stick here. And we're going to go ahead and basically have our wall kind of um, extend in that direction here going toward the rear. So again, for me, this is going to be facing toward the north. For you, it may be a little bit different. So just make sure you take that into account. What we're going to do here is we're just going to go ahead and right click the wall until we get north to tall. And it should extend upwards and kind of fill the space and look like that. After that's done, go into the rear. We're going to go ahead and place down an inside wall on top of that second stone block there. And then we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of stone blocks back for a total of eight blocks. It's going to go ahead and go down the center here like so. And it should end on top of that um, skeleton skull right there. We're going to go ahead and then place down an item frame, a black concrete block in the item frame, and then a black sign over the side of it, just like that to go ahead and finish off that uh, rear. Then going back up to the wall here, we're going to place down a stone block to the side. We're going to go and then place down a polished deep slate full block. And then a wither skeleton skull come off that toward the front. We're going to go ahead and go back one, two, three, four stone full blocks. And on the second and third stone full blocks from the front there, we're going to go ahead and place down our iron trap doors and use our debug stick like so. Again, you can go ahead and disregard the iron trap doors or use birchwood trap doors as an alternative. 
Then we're gonna place down our one, two, three and inside walls, and then our blank gray stainless paint on the back there. We're gonna place down a polished black stone wall on top of this one, and we're just gonna go ahead and use the same technique that we did before. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and extend it to our sides. So it looks like that there on the back. And once we have that all done there, um, that is going to pretty much wrap up everything we have for this layer, just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything, and everything does appear to be good to go. So that right there is gonna conclude everything we have for layer number nine, and with that, we'll probably go ahead and just move into our last final layers. All right, guys, so moving into our final layers, we have layers 10 through 13. To begin with, we're gonna go ahead and just very simply, we're gonna place down a iron trap door that's gonna go on top of this stair right here, and then we're gonna place down two daylight detectors forward from it, and we're gonna go ahead and turn those to the night mode like so. Then going to the rear, this is where the majority of our work is gonna take place. We're gonna go ahead and start off with by going ahead and grabbing a uh, like gray stainless paint, and we're gonna place it down on top of this um, wall right here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and then place down a row of stone blocks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, back like so. On the sides here, we're gonna place down a iron trap door here on this last stone block. We're also gonna go ahead and grab ourselves a flower pot, and we're gonna be placing down a flower pot that is gonna go on top of this block here. So again, to both sides. After that, we're gonna place down another stone block up like so. We're gonna go ahead and go back from it with a uh, gray um, sting or gray uh, concrete block. So right here. And then we wanna take our stone blocks back one, two, three, four, another gray concrete block, and another hand set wall. On the side of this first gray concrete block, we're gonna place down an item frame to both sides. And then in that item frame, we're gonna go ahead and place down a iron bar. So it's gonna be like this here to both sides. Continuing on, we're gonna go ahead and place down a light gray stainless paint on top of this stone block. So like so. And then we're gonna go ahead and place down a stone block back, followed by two, three, four, five, six back, and then a light gray stainless paint. After that, we're gonna go ahead and then place down a stone slab on top there. So on the very top, a stone slab. We're gonna go ahead and place down two daylight detectors. And on the side, or sorry, two pistons. Um, instead of those pistons, you could use stone full blocks or you can do a stone slab and then a stone full block. So um, two pistons here again can be the better option to go with. And we're gonna go ahead and also place down a skeleton skull on both sides of this second block. We're gonna go and then place down two stone full blocks. This can be followed with an andesite wall to both sides and then a light gray stainless paint coming off that wall. We then wanna place down a piston here on the very back. Now, after that's all done, uh, we pretty much are done with that back section and what we can do here is we can go ahead and actually have the uh, writing on the tail and really you can do whatever writing you want on here. Um, it's going to be basically a two letter um, code and usually this corresponds to a abbreviation for the base or the base code to help kind of identify what base this aircraft belongs to. Um, we You can go ahead and do whatever you really want, it doesn't really matter, but again it's going to be two banners and you're going to be positioned like this on both sides here of the tail. Now, we're not going to go ahead and touch those pistons just yet with our debug stick because we will be going ahead and putting our rotors on the aircraft, which would interfere with that. However, there is one thing also that we need to go ahead and talk about, and that is going to be the, basically, winch that is extendable on the side here. Now, what we're going to do here for this is we're going to place down a skeleton skull on top of this wall right here. So it's going to be on the right side here only and on top of that stone brick wall. Now, we're going to go ahead and then go back from the skeleton skull skull with an end rod. If you do want to have the winch extended out to the side, you can also go ahead and build it out this way. But for us, we're going to go ahead and have it folded in toward the helicopter. Uh, we then want to go ahead and grab a piston. And we're going to go ahead and place down a piston here that's going to be kind of upside down like so. Instead of the piston, you can go ahead and use a uh, stone upside down stair, stone top slab. Uh, really, there isn't any good alternatives for this. The piston here is kind of the best shape for it and using your debug stick, but again, you can use a stone top slab or you can find out some kind of alternative. We're gonna go ahead and place down there stone top slab here going back. Then on top of that stone top slab, we're gonna place down an iron trap door. And then on top of the piston, we're gonna place down a light green or rather a daylight detector, which we're gonna turn to the night mode. Um, unfortunately, our pist piston did get pushed down and activated. So we will go ahead and just kind of fix this real quick and it kind of actually pushed everything down one. So just be careful with that. Um, you may want to break your piston first and place down the daylight detector uh, before you go ahead and do that because as you can see for me it kind of made things a little weird so I'm going to go ahead and just real quick and fix that and there we go. So it sits like this and then we'll use our debug stick here to very simply go ahead and get rid of that piston. 
or to right click it and get rid of that wood portion. So it looks just like that. And that right there is going to complete layers 10 through 13 and really at this point in time uh, all we have left to do here is going to be basically the rotors for the helicopter. So with that I'm going to go ahead and grab our materials and I'll show you guys how to make the rotors for it. Alright guys so our final section here is going to be doing the rotors. Now the rotors here really aren't too difficult to do and we're going to go ahead and really just do one of them because it's basically the same for both sides. For our front one here is the one we're going to use for an example. We're going to place down a piston, or rather, sorry, an anvil here on the very front stone block. We're going to go ahead and place down an oakwood fence post, or fence gate, around these three sides. And we want them facing that direction like so. We're going to go ahead and then open the fence gates here toward the anvil. And we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves dark oakwood signs. We're going to place down a sign here on the sun on this side, a sign here on this fence gate, and the sign over here on this side of the fence gate like so. After that, we're going to go ahead and then go forward from this uh, first fence gate, we're going to place down a fence gate going forward. Then over here, same thing on the right side one. So this one's going to go ahead and go just like that off of it. And on this side here, it's going to be a little bit different. This uh, fence gate is going to come off the sign here. So it's going to kind of go out like that at an angle. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to go and take our polished blackstone slabs. Top slabs are going to go ahead and go forward from the fence gate. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. We're going to go ahead and then go to the right side one, we're going to go ahead and go back uh, to an angle with two top slabs, and we're going to go ahead and go back again two top slabs, so we have one, two, one, two, and we're going to go ahead and do this for a total of six times. So we have two, we're going to go ahead and do three, four, five, and six. So it's going to look just like that. Then our other side here, we're going to go ahead and do a, di a straight diagonal. So we're going to go ahead and go off the fence gate here with an, at an angle like so, and this is going to be a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And angle. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then the very last thing here we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go to the top of the fence gates that are open, and we're gonna place down an item frame. And then in those item frames, we're gonna place down black concrete blocks. And you're gonna go ahead and just take that same design and you're gonna go ahead and copy it to the back here. It will start right here on top of this piston, or on top of this stone block here. So right there after the pistons, and you're gonna go ahead and basically build your props from that. Now you can go ahead and do the same technique we did there for that, or you can go ahead and flip it. Um, for me, I have them facing both the same direction, so you can do that, or you can go ahead and kind of have it go the opposite direction, so you can have your straight, um, your straight blade come out this way if you really want to. Um, it really doesn't matter, but again, I'll leave it up to you guys and how you want to position that, but you're gonna build the same rotor design we just did for the front onto the back there. Make sure that once you have that rotor all complete and finished, you're going to go ahead and just make sure that you take your pistons and go ahead and use your debug stick on them. And once you have that all done right there, that is going to complete my design here for the CH-46 C Knight Medium Utility Helicopter. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do use this build, I do ask you guys give me proper credit. If this can be anything from the side of the build, link to my channel or this video if this does create social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to use it for a project you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun for all that fun stuff. And um, again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Foss Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. As always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is down in my video description. And uh, support the channel and earn a viewer core request um, of your choosing every month. You're a patron. Anyways, uh, though, again, that's going to do it for this video. Hope you guys do enjoy. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 2 4 and I'll see you guys next time.